Just a few weeks ago, Dr. Danica Moore joined us for a discussion about chronic fatigue syndrome. Since then, there's been a development regarding the illness, and it has to do with a previously undetected retrovirus. Joining us for an update once again is Dr. Danica Moore. Dr. Danica, thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you. And filling us in on this exciting new development. Yeah, I mean, this is big news. We know that the CDC estimates that there are between 1 million and 4 million people mm -hmm. in this country that suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome, correct? Correct. So this is huge news. For this is all a huge people. problem and because previously we really didn't know what caused chronic fatigue syndrome. We still don't know what causes it, but what this latest paper in, in the very prestigious medical journal Science has discovered from a group of investigators out at the Whitmore Peterson Institute in Nevada, they found 67 percent of the patient's blood that they studied of patients with severe chronic fatigue syndrome had a retrovirus called XMRV. Fascinating. And so the link, we don't yet know exactly what right. this means. We don't know if it's ca a causal link, right. so this caused that. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's a coincidence. We don't know if it's what's called a piggyback virus, so that in these patients they're more susceptible to this mm -hmm. virus. Or we don't know if it's a red herring. What we do know, what this study shows us, first and foremost, most importantly, is there is a biologic basis for chronic fatigue syndrome. So we don't want to hear any more about, oh, they have depression or it's all in their heads. That argument is over. What a this relief. is yet another piece of evidence that this is biological. It's not the first piece of evidence, right. but it's the most alarming and um, attention-getting, or what Dr. Suzanne Vernon of the Chronic Fatigue Immune Deficiency Syndrome Association calls a game changer. And what a relief for the millions of sufferers. And their now, family members, absolutely. and their doctors who've been frustrated by this. Yes. Now what needs to happen is we need much more research from the CDC, from the NIH, from the National Cancer Institute, from everybody who needs to take this retrovirus as seriously as we took the other most famous retrovirus, HIV. HIV. Absolutely. Before we get into that, mm -hmm. explain to us, please, <laughs> the difference between a retrovirus and a regular old virus. Right. Um, very simply, it has to do with differences in how the virus reproduces. So a retrovirus gets into the host cell and becomes part of the host cell DNA. That sounds terrifying. Yeah. And so it stays with you, presumably, forever, unless you have an antiretroviral treatment, and which so hopefully will, will be in our Can you pass future. it on to your children and your children's children into... Well, in the case of HIV, we, which is a retrovirus, we know that can be passed right. by, from mother to child uh, through the birth canal and also through breast milk. We do know that these viruses are transmitted through exchange of bodily fluids, mm -hmm. not through the air like the flu virus. But what we don't know is how this particular XMRV is um, transmitted between patients who have CFS. Right. It's also been associated with people with a highly aggressive form of prostate cancer. Uh, Interesting so we connection. don't know how this is transmitted. We don't think it's contagious per se, right. because we know that there are many people with chronic fatigue syndrome who've got close family members who they've been living with for years who don't have the disease. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what we do know about chronic fatigue syndrome is that historically there have been certain areas where there have been outbreaks of chronic fatigue syndrome. So we don't know if this is two different types, if this is two different mechanisms. We don't know if this is just one of many viruses which may cause chronic fatigue syndrome, but we do know that we now need to do a lot more research. A lot more research. Now, a retrovirus like HIV, we know it can be passed down one generation, but can it be also passed down su subsequent generations? I, don't honestly, uh, I don't know if grandparents and grandchildren yeah, studies have been done, but if the mother has it, we know it can be passed. So much more needs to be studied. Now, you say that this information came out of a private lab. Why is it that these private labs seem to be on the cutting edge here? Um, well, the first thing is that this is funded by a family who has a daughter. Uh, who has chronic fatigue syndrome. So this family is extremely philanthropic and extremely motivated and to probably find extremely wealthy. Yeah, and ex <laughs> and they also have generated an institute where people sure, can donate absolutely. money. So it's it's funded by private funds. The state of Nevada also contributed money. Uh, this was also a collaboration with the Cleveland Clinic and the National Cancer right. Institute. But Dr. Judy Mikovits, who was the lead investigator on this study, um, really gives a lot of credit to the uh, Whitmore family who has really pursued this single with a single focus and a single purpose. Um, and that's what we now need the CDC to do. Absolutely. Is to Take say, okay, 
next step. You know, this is at least as important as swine flu. Absolutely. And so what exactly is the next step? Now we've, mm -hmm. we've discovered this retrovirus. Mm -hmm. We've identified it. Now what mm -hmm. is the next step? The next step is to expand the studies and reproduce the studies. Right. Always in science, whenever we have a pivotal trial or a new finding, we want other labs to be able to reproduce it in other groups of other patients with CFS. And we want to understand what is this retrovirus? How is it transmitted? Uh, is it infectious? Is it treatable? And can we develop a blood test to make the proper diagnosis in right. all of these patients? All right. Uh, so this is all, all a great lot of work. Information. <laughs> Dr. Donica Moore, thank you so much for filling thank us you. in on this exciting new development. And for more health news and information that's good to know, please visit the health page at abcnews.com. ABC News Now. Good to know.